bunch of other things. Uh, it's really interesting the amount of places you can find and sometimes accidentally come across moonshiners. Uh, but that's a story for another <laughs> day. <laughs> uh, I've done that a couple times. So, Pacific Drive is a very interesting game developed by publishers Ironwood Studios, who are based out here in Seattle. And it talks about a tradition that we have in the Pacific Northwest that even led to some of the West Coast rallies that we have called the Pacific Drive. And typically you start in either California or you start in northern Washington. You go through the Olympic Peninsula and down the coast, down towards uh, California. And the developer of the game loved his station wagon so much, he wanted to tell a story about that, create a survival game with it, and of course... Add the little bit of cryptid history that Washington State has with Bigfoots and aliens into the game. Uh, this is a run-based survival adventure. So basically, you're going to be traveling in the Olympic exclusion zone. Several years ago, something weird happened here from the abductors. Not a whole lot of information on who they are yet, but it's kind of signaling aliens. Kind of. The entire Olympic Peninsula has been raided off limits from the government, but adventurous people still want to take their Pacific Drive, because that's part of the culture too, driving where you're not supposed to, and also gather technology for wealth and riches that have been left behind in that zone. So you take your car, you drive out there, you have to avoid all the storms while you're out there and gather up parts to either upgrade your car or hopefully make some money in the future. The interesting thing, too, is you do have a base of operations in an abandoned garage. On the outside of the garage, you can see signs that say, feel free to take whatever you want, never coming back. So there's a lot of that life of people who just dropped everything and evacuated. But here you are in your circumstances. You are stuck here, and you got to figure out your way out of the Olympic exclusion zone. But you can't just drive out. You have to go gather supplies. As you gather precious resources and investigate what's been left behind in the ruins, you are encountered with a hostile environment, hostile enemies, as well as the potential of upgrading your vehicle to make it last better. Now, the question we have for the community is, what are your thoughts? Does this game seem like it will fit well with other solo survival games, like Escape the Pacific or The Long Dark? And what do you look for in your solo survival experience? In the meantime, we'll go ahead and cover more of the game and see if that helps answer some of the questions you might have. So the setting is here in the Pacific Northwest dump, which is kind of interesting because there are games that are made here in the Pacific Northwest, such as Last of Us 2, but it always seems like they kind of miss the mark on what it's actually like to live out here, whether it's just the, the way that the nature looks or anything. When you think of a game that takes place in Pacific Northwest, what are some key components you're looking for? Um, I'm looking for a lot of, I would say, kind of forester, hiking trail kind of modernization. And what I mean by that is that there, when you go through the woods almost anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, there are parking, uh, there are hiking trails, there are tons of stuff because the people of the Northwest are constantly tread, treading new hiking trails. You know, it's funny you bring that up because that's one of the reasons why I like the fact that they chose the Olympic Peninsula. A lot of people don't realize this, but in the Olympic Mountains, we have one of the largest rainforests in the United States. And it's such a weird rainforest too. If you ever get to see it, we don't have mangrove trees. But the water is so prevalent there that the tall trees will grow roots 15 feet up in the air that sprawl out into the ground with swamp-like moss hanging from it. So sure, there are trails, there's old gas stations, there's old hiking, like you said, campsites. But at the same time, because it is a rainforest, nature is able to reclaim those areas rather quickly. So since the exclusion zone has been abandoned for a few years since the last storm event, it's going to be fun seeing that. I call it like the Jurassic Park experience when you watch The Last World and they're like, where are we? And they kind of clear out the sign and then you see, oh, Jurassic Park site B. It's like, oh my gosh, you're there. I cannot wait for that. When you see a strange alien structure and you wonder, is this alien or is this human? Clear aside the brush and you realize it's just some dude's old fishing shack. And I'm really looking forward to it. My other favorite thing about it is isolation. I think that's one of the things I like about the long dark. 
it's not that people just decided not to live here. Something pushed them out, whether it's bad weather or an event, or in this case, a mandatory government uh, evacuation. And a lot of the signage that you see in the trailers and such indicates that it was kind of a forced evacuation. It was, you are no longer allowed to be here. And when you look at a map of the Washington state, and you could Google this online, West Coast Federal Forests, it's crazy how much of the land is federal land. So when they tell you to get out, you have to get out. Is isolation something that attracts you in survival games, or is it something that detracts you from survival games? Well, isolation actually gives you that set of fear. It makes you worried about you are the end all. If you don't find enough food, there's no one to rely on. If you don't find enough water, there's no one to fetch it for you. You get stuck, trapped between a saw blade and a bunny rabbit that explodes or something up on your car. <laughs> well, guess what? You got to figure yourself out of that pickle. Um, okay, okay. And it's always funny when you got to leave your car behind to go get water and food and, and you're running out with your crowbar. And then when you come back, you're like, oh, crap, how do I get in my car without causing these things to blow up? Because there, there's one trailer you could watch where it shows the guy run to his car and get in. The bunnies blow up and it sends his car flying. I'm not talking a roll like Hollywood Independence Day. Your car is flying off the road and then you got to figure out how to get it from where it lands back up to the road and take it back to the workshop to repair it. So you got to be careful with that. But that's the interesting thing. The dev talked about the car and you know, whenever you do the Pacific drive, it's never in a really nice car. It's always in that car that you souped up for long travel. And one of the things that they talked about is they want the car to feel like your only friend, like your companion. And we've played games like that, where your uh, Star Wars does it a lot, where your companion is a droid that you cannot understand. That is an artificial intelligence. So does it have feelings or not? But either way, we still kind of treat it that way. And one of the things I was talking with the people in the forums about, because they're like, I don't really see how they're going to be able to create this emotional attachment with the car. When I was working at Best Buy, we had people bringing in their Roombas that sucked in dog poop. They would not buy a new Roomba. They named their Roomba. Like they got attached to their Roomba. So I absolutely can imagine getting attached to this. But in the picture we have here, you're arriving with a gas tank to a station wagon that is literally stripped down to almost the frame that you have to fix up in this garage to drive around, which I think is really cool. The car's a tool. You can upgrade it. In the end, it ends up looking like the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. It's so cool, all the different things you can get. And it doesn't look like, oh, well, we men and blacked it. We, we went and got like 22nd century level technology. No, this really does look like a redneck was sitting there going, you know what? I got this spotlight that has a motion sensor on it that'll track anything coming up to you. It's such a good idea that they've had this real advanced technology, but homemade look. Yes, Dunk. I know what's wrong with it. Ain't I got no <laughs> gas in it? <laughs> That's for you, puppy. Uh, That's for you. Uh, 